Hello and welcome back to Little Saints on Sunday. I hope you've had a lovely week. We have a nice craft for you this week, so make sure you stay and watch. Enjoy your service. Please join in with our Little Saints on Sunday introductory prayer. I start with thanks and then give praise for all your kind and loving ways. To God who kept me through the night and wake me with the morning light. Help me, Lord, to love you more than I ever loved before. Amen. It is time to clear your throat, take out your favourite instruments and join in with our first song. Today's reading is Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20, Peter's declaration about Jesus. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, 
Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all of the powers of hell will not conquer it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now is the time for the reflection on today's Bible reading. Today we heard in the reading Jesus asking the disciples some questions. Um, he was asking them, who do people say I am? And the disciples said, some people say you're John the Baptist, or some people say you're Elijah, or some people say that you're Jeremiah. But these were people that lived a long time before Jesus. They were prophets, Old Testament prophets. And they were very good people. John the Baptist preached about the kingdom of God. Elijah was a very good man and was known for doing wonderful things. So Jesus was asking the disciples who people said he was. Well, he didn't kind of linger very long. They said their answers, but then he said, who am I? The son of God. So who was Jesus? Have you ever thought about who Jesus was? Look, I got this out. I think most of the time we think about Jesus as a little baby at Christmas, in the nativity, in a manger. But he was just a little baby then, and he went on to do great things and teach us Teach us about God. Teach us how to be good Christians. Teach us how to love one another. Another thing I thought about when I thought about this question that Jesus was asking was that game, Who Am I?, where you flip all the people up and you've got all different faces, you know, and we could say, did Jesus have a beard? Yes. So you put all the beards down. And then you could say, did he have long hair? Yes. So you put all the ones with long hair down. And then you could say, did he wear robes? Yes. So you put all the ones with robes down. However, what made Jesus unique? What's the thing about Jesus that makes him different from everybody else? Jesus was the Son of God. And he said, Who do you say I am? And Peter, who was called Simon Peter, answered him. And he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, There is no way you could know this. Nobody could have told you this. The Holy Spirit must have revealed it to you. And because of your faith and because you believe in me, I'm going to build my church on you. And Peter went on to become a great disciple. He went on to teach thousands and thousands of people all over the world about Jesus. He still teaches you and me today because we read the Gospels 
and we read the New Testament so we can learn about Jesus and we can learn about what he said and we can learn about how he wants us to live and how we can be Christians. So yes, Jesus was a little baby in a manger and it was an amazing thing and it was celebrated by angels. But you think about who Jesus is. Think about it for a minute. Who is Jesus to you? He's somebody you pray for. He's somebody you say thank you to. When you're upset, you pray to him. When you're happy, you talk to him. When something wonderful happens, you thank him. In church, we try to thank Jesus all the time because we know he's the son of God and we know that he loves us and we know all the things that he did for us and for all the other people, all the miracles he showed us. So we're at an advantage to those early disciples because we can keep going back and reading about Jesus and we can keep trying to find out about him. Yes, they lived with him and they heard his word. But it was later that they wrote it all down. And the very special thing is, we still learn about Jesus today because they teach us. Who do you think Jesus is? I hope you think he's your friend. It is time to clear your throat again, get out your instruments and join him with the next song. The Creed. 
I believe in God above. I believe in Jesus' love. I believe his spirit too comes to teach me what to do. I believe that I should be kind and loving, Lord, like thee. This is our confession. Today we can say sorry for our faults and failings and ask God to help and forgive us for doing things which we knew would hurt others. Father, forgive us for turning away when we should have listened. Father, forgive us for allowing ourselves to be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us. Jesus, thank you for your love and for your forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Dear Jesus, we give thanks for our church, not just the building, because you teach us that the church is the people. Us, we are your church. When we can, it is really good to meet in a building together. But when we can't, we can still pray for each other and with each other. To be a member of your church means to share the good news that we read in the Bible. Help us to be your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, in the Bible reading today, we read that Peter knew that Jesus was and is our saviour. Not just a special baby celebrated at Christmas, but someone who can forgive the things we do wrong and help us to turn away from the bad things. We pray that we will listen to you and let your love for us lead us on the right path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in the past weeks we've thought about being like seeds in the parable of the sower. Help us now to be firm like rocks. Jesus said that Peter was like a rock on which to build his church. Keep us firm in our faith so that we always believe in and trust you. Because we are your church and this is the faith of our church. Amen. This is our final song today, so really enjoy it by singing as loudly as you can. Our Lord Jesus Christ, 
The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. You can now create today's craft by watching the video. The instructions are very simple. Hello and welcome back to Little Saints on Sunday. This is your craft video for Build My Church. So, as you can tell, we're building a church. So what you'll get in your pack is a church template with little doors and windows cut out and a little cross in the corner. A little bit of paper which you'll need to fold into this shape. Some colourful flippy see-through paper and a little rectangle cut out of paper. What you will also need but won't get in your pack is a glue stick, a pen, and some scissors. They're very sharp scissors, so be careful. So let's move all of the stuff that we need over here. There's quite a few bits, isn't there? There we go. So with your little church shape, you need to get your scissors and cut around your church. There's a little line at the bottom, which you can't cut. I'll show you where that is once I've cut out my church. Be very careful with the scissors because they're sharp. So, as you can see, I've left this little bit because you can't cut off the bottom section of the church. Otherwise it won't stand up, it will just flop to the ground. And that's not what we need. Because churches don't flop to the ground, do they? No. So now you have to cut out your little cross. Like this. Make sure you put all of this paper in the bin though or the recycling, or if you could find another use for it, that's amazing. Right, this bit gets a little bit tricky, so I'm going to get some smaller scissors so that I don't cut myself, because the cross is very, very small. There we go. So now I've got a little cross shape. We need to stick that onto the top of our church with our glue stick. So just put a little dot of it on the bottom and then stick the bottom of it onto the top. So now you have the cross on the top of the church. That's also known as a steeple. So on Crick Church, it's a little cockerel, I think. There we go. So now you need to get your little flippy bits of see-through paper, turn your church around, and then cut them out a little bit so that they fit onto your windows. And then you can make them in any pattern that you like. And then stick them onto the back with your glue stick. Make sure you don't get any of the glue into the windows, otherwise you'll be able to see it. Unless you're using glue that dries clear. There we go. So this one's just going to be a plain blue window. So if you look through the front, it's also see-through and blue. So I'm not going to do multicoloured windows, but you can if you want. You can even do patterns on them because they patterns look very pretty on windows. So I'm going to put this one onto the top. There we go. You could also use sellotape if you don't want to use glue for the windows. And then as you can see, I've got a little flap there and there. So I'm just going to cut that bit off like that. And then I'm going to um, put blue and pink in this bit. So cut that a little bit there and cut that a little bit there. So then to put two colours, you just, you can overlap them as well because if you overlap pink and blue, that makes purple. 
So I'm going to have a pink, blue and purple window on the middle. Because I think that will be very pretty. There you go. Thank you. You might need someone to hold your church for you at this bit. There we go. Does that work? Yeah, see? Got it. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> pink and blue window. And the pink's gone a little bit purple, but that's fine. There we go. So now, I think I'm going to leave that window and then I'll do that one a bit later. So now you need to get your little cube, rectangle side, and glue the edges of that and the top and bottom of it. You're not gluing the middle, otherwise that's going to stick the doors to it. And then just stick it over the top of the doors, but make sure your doors still open. We'll see why in a minute. And then you need to get your little bit of paper, fold it like this. So you'll just fold it there, there, and there. And then you need to draw a purse on it. I've already drawn my person. And then you need to cut out your person like this. Again, make sure you um, tidy your paper away afterwards because you don't want to make a mess. There we go. Now we're moving on to the legs. This is going to be your congregation. The congregation is the people that go to the church. So like when we go to Little Saints on Sundays, we are also called the congregation. It's a very interesting fact. There we go. Again, be careful with the scissors because they're still sharp. There we go. You could even colour in them. Colour them in, sorry. You could give them pretty little faces and you could give them clothes. You could give them hair. You could give them anything, to be honest. And then as you can see, we've got lots of people. And then you need to get one of your people, stick a bit of glue onto their arm and their leg, and then stick them onto the little flap that you put behind your church. And then you have the congregation coming out of the church. And then you need to get this bottom bit here and fold it backwards so that there's a little flap on the bottom, like that, so that your church stands up. And then you can get rid of all of them. So I still have this window missing, but I can fill that in later. Bye.